Everyone, this is six tick API for February sixth. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to paste the link if you guys want to add your name to the uh, attendees. Okay, so for today, um. Let's get started with the the board. I took some time um, to to review this uh, proposal. I found that there were some um, questions that needed to be answered on on how we will on how upgrades and and things like that will will work. So I have put that as questions here. Um, if anyone else has cycles to, to take a look at this proposal, please um, go ahead and add your reviews. Um, yeah, so for this one, oh, before we move there, um, the other things in the progress, so this one has been converted to draft. Um, I think we can move this back to to do um, until it is draft. And um, this PR is progressing well. I think we are getting um, response from from other reviewers as well. So uh, once it is ready, I think it will be marked as well. I, I don't have any other updates from from this board. Um, is there anyone with updates here? Okay, I think in that case, we can move to the next um, next item on the agenda, um, which is this. So um, and for this particular proposal, I know we want to, you know, get get this um, reviewed and more soon. Um, I think we have had discussions around some of the open questions in the past. What I wanted to get at today is um, what are what are the pending open questions and um, yeah. What would help you know to get answers to those? Do you have thoughts on that? I think that the... um, Alay, I do not, but um, point me at the scope of work, and I will uh, respond to you on email. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, I think so. This this is um, Ed, who is on this call, is also working on this, and I think in our prior discussion. Um, Ed had enumerated open okay. disc, uh, open questions, so right. um, this is more more for for the audience. Sure, I'll I'll take a look at that feature lifecycle. That shouldn't be too hard to find. So I think there is nothing uh, critical. Uh, can you hear me? By the way. Yep. Okay. I don't think there is uh, something big there. Uh, I think I got attention from some, but there is, uh, I need to pressure it, to do some more pressure, to get more, uh, maybe a, a GTM at least, or it. I have one comment there that I didn't answer, but it was about text, not something important. The open, the open issues were at the bottom. If you have comments about them, please, please add them. But... That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll plan on at least from my side, I'll plan on um, doing another pass on that um sometime this week. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Um uh, so I think with that we can move to the next item. Um so I was looking at mm, something in this design doc um, related to API. And I bumped upon this section, which is introducing new enum value in an existing field. And this section provides a nice way of why, what kinds of problems are created in, in API clients when, when we add a new value to enums and how to go around that. Um, 
I don't want to get into all the details of that in this call, but it is really, I found it an, a very interesting read. And especially for, for API reviewers, I think this is um, this is really interesting information. I've put it as a link on the agenda. If anyone is interested, please go ahead. I think this okay. is really good. Okay, thank you. I think in, uh, I think we should uh, probably this uh, API changes uh, markdown file. We should probably uh, make from this uh, lecture or uh, a, a, a series of lectures because I think we are uh, many many contributors are not even looking at not at this and not on other other sources for. Uh, for learning this, so yeah, or at the minimum we need a, a, some a reviewer or approver that is is an expert in this area, so they can give their uh, their perspective of on when an API is changed. Yeah, so I think this call was supposed to be that, right? So I think for for people attending this call. Um, we at least we should uh, like between us we should go through this document carefully and um once once we move along the the process of formalizing sig api um it, the reviewers from sig api will you know will, will provide the guidance on, on from 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 this document. So I, I fully agree. I, I don't know if we have, you know, we have folks who would be interested to um, listen, and, you know, few of us talk about this um, document. Um, I think if, if we have interest and if we have audience, um, then definitely I'd be happy to, to, you know, volunteer and talk about this, this document in depth. But yeah, Edward, do you have suggestions on how to um, tackle this from from people who are, you know, from from people who are first contributing API changes and second um, reviewing and approving uh, API changes? I think think I have a, a pull request here, right? This is a pull request which is adding an a new enum. Um, field and it could really use um, use suggestions from here. Well, if if not directly, they can at least be considered, right? Uh, so, and in this particular case, I think this this PR is came up few days back and it's already uh, uh, tagged. Maybe. Yeah, it's already tagged and approved, right? So yes, it's uh first of all we have tomorrow the community meeting. I so I have a I have difficulties in in uh, or we have difficulties in general to to block first of all things, but we could gently hold things and if we provide feedback and we reference it from where it is coming from from where the concerns are coming i think it is impossible to ignore them so i mean if we go here and we we understand that there is a problem and we comment on it i'm i don't think it will be ignored it may be considered and then so the the maintainer can say okay i understand the limitation but one two three four uh yeah. but uh, that's the only thing that we can do that i mean the part of uh, learning is uh is something that needs to be contributed in 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 some way we need to push it that's the learning part and the enforcing part is either the review with a halt or something like that or uh, or to manage to convince the the project to to put uh, uh, like 
ownership on API, so it will be on a specific uh, specific group of uh, maintainers that they must go over it uh, and and check that it it confirms all all these rules. Yeah, and I don't know how hard it, how easy it is to do it at work. We could try. I I think the biggest problem I think is lack of cycle, right? I think we need more people attending, um, you know, this call and and contributing in this, um, and and they, so that way we can have, um, you know, more folks or more pool of people reviewing between just one or two uh, people. I think it to me the scope of work where we really start to enforce all the api facing changes it seems to be but we can start you know we can start yeah what yeah we can, we need to maybe it it will not be maybe it needs to be not voluntarily i can try to check from my side if we can <laughs> we can Force it somehow, gently force it. Let's see. Wait, wait. Yes. Uh, so for that, do you want me to put this PR, the one uh, where we have, well, yeah, new enum being added as a to do in our board? I think that would be right as an action item. Sure. Do, do you you have already read that section and have insights about the if you have any comments about what was done or so I have briefly skimmed through it and I can give you a TLDR of what's happening, but you might have to um, dig, dig a little bit. So what what this section is saying is that let's say if you add you have a list of enums, right? Um and if you add a new enum to that list the clients who are reacting on that enum, they will by default treat the new enum condition as, as unknown, right? Because most likely they have an if else or a switch case condition which handles the different um, state in, in that enum and you're adding one which will be handled as a uh, unknown and so let's take an example of a pod, right? So if you have a pod phase which is pending, running, and and succeeding, and if you add a new enum which says um scheduling, right? And then you have a replica set, a controller which has um, a client side logic where it will treat pending, running, and succeeded. In, in its own cases and for unknown unknown or default case, it will kill and recreate the form, right? So now if you add a scheduling enum to that form phase, then on the client side, it will fall to that default case. And even if it is scheduling, it will go, it will go delete that. So that's the gist of what this section is expressing that new enums could cause unknown client side problems. And in order to address it, you can um, you can create a, a release schedule where you stagger it, right? So the first release you do, I, I think I forget what the recommendation was here. Uh, so that's that's the problem. And what they have tried to do in this particular uh, PR, um, the place where we have to dig in next is is this. API user facing first, and if it is user facing, will clients uh, have problem in, uh, you know, addressing this new or addressing this new state? And if yes, then I think we sh we should follow the guidance. For okay, so uh, if I understood correctly, is that. If you if you add this uh, this enum, then the client does not recognize it, and it can handle it as unrecognized as before. But I think this will this affects only specific cases for that I can think of. For example, if we take an existing uh, enum, let's say 
I don't know what they, they this is like a phase or right it's phase I think right this is phase or yeah, or what? It's yeah. Phase. yeah. so first of all just to, for everyone to know phase is it's supposed to be deprecated and no one should use it but uh, it's like it's I think I found the, the reference where they explicitly recommend not to use phases anymore but to use conditions uh, yeah, but that's this true. is not I, I think I was going down the same route and that's where I found this. And one of the problems with phases is this enum, enum problem. I, I think okay. we are talking about the same thing. Yeah, so the, the problem with the phases is that they, they actually the I, what I read is the problem with the phases, which makes sense is that it's like a state machine and you don't want to have a state machine in the code. You want to look at things like, uh, you just want to know that something happened in general or that it, it happens sometime, but you don't care that it happened exactly now. You don't care what was before. You just care about the current state, irrelevant of uh, when it happened in the past and what is the steps. But but in but let's go back to this one. So I think in in, in the rule here is that if you have a for example a, an enum and you decide it to split this enum into two because it's too generic and you want to make it more uh, grain, right? Like, like for example, you want, I don't, know, I don't have a, like, for example, you can take succeeded and you want to make succeeded one and succeeded two, right? If you want something like that, then I think the problem that they express here is, is uh, it will break clients for sure because you are trying now to, uh, you are trying to not to introduce something new, just new. You just you are in, actually trying to introduce something in in between. But if if uh, if the additional value just represents something that was like it's in the it's it's not splitting something else. It's just adding more information, right? For example. Um, I don't know, it's like, uh, you can say red, white, and blue, and now I'm, I'm adding uh, black, then I think that's fine. It's like, the ones that don't know what black means, they can they can kill your, uh, I mean, they can do whatever they want because they don't recognize what is black. But there it's, it's for this specific case that you are showing here, I think it is relevant because they are using phases and in terms of phases, it is indeed uh, uh, an option that you can you can go through, and then they can say if you got into that uh, state, then I will do something uh, something specific. They could okay. argue. I, I can think about what they could argue here is they could say that error is an it's like the the leaf case. So they will say, okay, so if, if the client said that uh, he, it will do something or, or something like killing you, killing someone because it's an unknown state, then I'm fine because it's error. So who cares? So I think that that is a, a fair point, but what what I'm so you're you're making the case that this particular recommendation does not apply to you, right? What no, I no. Was... Okay. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, what they could argue if if they will go to that that phase. But the general, what you generally said, I think it it's valid. Like uh, what you explicitly say that if it's an enum uh, like phases, then uh, the problem is that I think that the the comment about when it's not good to add an enum because it can break something is is just how you look at this uh, the the parameter of this enum so in this case phases is acting like a state machine and in a state machine if you add something new yes you will break clients for sure but in in a uh, but in other cases like for example conditions i could put uh, i could my system can support 10 conditions and it's fine to add new ones and they, uh, it's fine to add them as enums in this case. This is what I, I try to say. Yeah, that, that makes sense because when you look for conditions, 
And when you add new conditions, you specifically look for that condition and get your kind of not handling the default case. So I, I think I, I understand and follow what you're saying. And um, th this is where I am at right now. I have not done uh, any more research whether you know this particular case um, here is being like something here is being broken by, by this new field or other clients are being broken by this new field. So uh, I, yeah. that's where I'm at and wanted to bring you up to speed to that. Yeah, the problem is with this kind of PRs that when they, when they add something to something that is already known to be problematic, then we have a problem here. So, but uh, I think it's a valid uh, comment to put here that uh, and to explain the the disadvantage of the using of the phases, uh, the the problem of adding this enum here, and uh, and why it is better to just add a, a condition. That's it. And I think they do have a condition. I'm not sure that they don't. So they they the pro maybe the 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 solution here should be that they should instruct the clients to look at the condition and not on the face. Yeah, especially because um, there is a failed phase as well, right? So yeah. potentially you could time out this condition into failed state with, sorry, time out this state into failed and have a condition that it failed due to, you know, this, this problem, yes. things like that. So maybe do you want to add the comment here or I, I can put it on my to-do to add the comment, but if you want to do it yeah, more. Uh... Please, um, I think I think we might have to dig a little bit more. I don't want to add a comment, which is premature. So um, okay. yeah, either you can do it or I. Because this one can get in very quickly without even, uh, <laughs> with a blink of an eye, it's already approved. It's like. Yeah, waiting. Or if you want, you can put uh, just put in the in the action item, and I'll I'll try to okay look at yeah. it. But I think it, what I can add is just what I just said, right? It's like nothing. I don't have anything small smarter to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, sorry, I need to do this. <clears throat> Alrighty. So I think that's all I had regarding this bullet point. Yeah, I I think we can switch around the agenda. We can discuss the other two and take this the last. Um, yeah. yeah. But It's it's uh, I I wrote just partners because I don't have a good name for this, but uh, we yeah. it it happened like uh, I think in the, I saw at least two two scenarios, one very close to me and another one that's a little uh, more distant than me that that I'm working on, but uh, both of them were about APIs, and uh, and they discussed how to represent. Uh, it's not how to represent. Let me try to find the the, the actual code. It will be easier to talk about it as an example. Um, how will I find the code? That's a good question. One second. It was not here. Uh, what what is the? Um, I'm trying to think how to how to find it. I think. 
Um, are you looking at new PRs or is it code in? It's, uh, it's actually it's a uh, it's it's like it's a one that was already, I think, closed. Let's see. I think I found it. One second. Yes, one in. I will. I will share the PR. We'll put it in the message here. Okay. Yeah. This is the PR. This is just an example because I saw other. Uh, there are other patterns that very similar. Some of some of them even worse. Do you see the API that was suggested here? The the suggestion is. Like, um, oh, did you want me to? Okay, is it in the description? One second. Sorry. Um, okay, so the what was suggested is, uh, can you see the? No, the the API. You need to go to the. Uh, here, here is enough. It's good enough here. Do you see this uh, migration, new new stanza? This this migration thing, this migration was added. It was added under uh, the this uh, binding thing. The the way this binding looks is uh, under the binding you have a key value map. The key is the name, which is passed in this case, and then there is a well defined struct. This well defined struct until now it had this network attachment definition, had sidecar image, and now it added migration. And that mm -hmm. migration was was added, and and the migration has a structure uh, with a, with a method in it. Okay, it's like mm -hmm. a, how to do the migration, something like that. Now, what I the, there was a debate of how to do it. There were three options. One was to do migration method and just, I mean, it's like putting the method at the top, right? And to have only, instead of having migration and a structure below it, mm -hmm. it could have been migration method and then that's it okay, with options. Uh, option two was this one, which is something I, I actually don't like it, but uh, let me, it, it it works like that. You you if you set the migration, either it's empty like with the uh, empty um, braces, or you set the migration with content like a method in it. It means that implicitly it means it is enabled because you specify it. Uh, and the method you it's optional. You can set it or not. It's, if you don't set it, it's nothing. It's like an empty method. And okay. and uh, the point here was that if you don't set the method, it's like method nil, then method nil is means disabled. It's like migration is not supported. And if you set migration with something, even if it's empty, it is supported, it's enabled. Okay, that was the, the ugly part that I didn't like. And the third option was to have the same thing as you see here, but with a field that's called enabled. Okay. So you will have migration enabled. You could you could say true or false, and then method or it's optional as well. That's it. So the the migrate in that case migration nil will will just mean that a default will have to be chosen. So it's like an, you will have to choose a default. For example, you could say the default is disabled, but but it's not dependent on that. That's it. That's the so this kind of patterns. Now the there is a even there is even a, another pattern that I saw. It's use it's used. We have it in the project from old code, from old APIs. Is that uh, you will they will set something like migration. Then they will say full equals uh, empty brackets. It means it's it's set. That's the. That's I can I can share that as well the code that code, and I saw it almost being used again, but we are lucky that it was not in my opinion. But uh, yeah. let me show you how it looks like. Um, yes, this one. Ah, oh, not this one. What is the binding? Ah, I cannot find it now. Int 
interface. Oh, no. This one? No. Now I'm not, I cannot find what I want. <laughs> but you could start discussing this, uh, what you think about that one, if you like. Yeah, no, I think uh, with the, the points you bring up um, are valid. And I have questions. So this is the current accepted solution, right? Oh, uh, current what? This, this API here, this is the accepted solution that got merged. Yes, unfortunately, yes. But we could okay. change. It's a, it's changeable because it's under a, an alpha feature gate. Got it. And what what was your reservation around this here? Um, it was a problem that migration struct implicitly tells you that this is enabled, and then the the method could be optional here, nil, which will which will say okay, it's it's disabled. Is that correct? Yes, it's like the the usage of the nil was not used to set a default. It was it was used to set to actually say ex, an explicit disable. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I I definitely think we can improve this pattern, right? So there are multiple things that, that come to my mind. So what you can change this in to, you know, make it more explicit is you can say migration uh, enabled, right? And that could be a Boolean. And then you could say migration method and it could only take in, like the migration method field only comes into a picture if this is true. And there you can have a default policy. If this is nil, this is true and this is nil, you have a default policy. And if you don't have a default policy, user can you know specify. Um, uh, so you could change this API to that. And I have seen that API pattern fairly common in the in, uh, What What was the, part? can you repeat the pattern? Sorry. Yeah. So, so imagine this particular field as migration enabled, right? Yes. Um, so that will be a Boolean whether migration is enabled or not. Um, and then um, there is a separate field, migration method or migration policy or, or whatever appropriate name for it that gives you what method um, to use, right? Yeah. And that is an optional field which will only come into um, which will only take effect if this particular migration enabled field is is true. And so the, the benefit there is if if this is true and the method is nil, then you set a default to it. If this is true and method is not not nil, then you set a, a user provided method. And if this is false, you just ignore this. Right. So yeah, so basically you are saying to put a uh... Uh, to put uh, to do, put an enabled uh, field under in the stat struct under right. This is what you mean. Yes. Or not. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, the the question I have is, does this is so? Forgive me. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind on on understanding this interface. But does this field anyway relate to whether your enabling migration or not yeah that was the the the, the name passed is it's uh it's a value it's a name of of uh, in this case you see binding right so instead mm -hmm. of having binding with a list you have binding as a map so the key is changeable it's just a name it needs to be a unique name and yeah. then you put all the parameters that for that name, but you could create another one that is called full and then put the things there. So you could no. pass can have migration enable and full can have migration disabled. Got it. Okay, awesome. But in in general, past you know could also have migration disabled. What I'm trying to say is this the name here does not implicitly mean 
whether migration is enabled or deep. No, it, if, it, no it, if, the, if someone from the outside would reference this name past, right? Then mm -hmm. it will take the information from here and, and it will mean that whatever it's written here. Done. That's the yes. idea. Yeah. Yes, then I then I'm yes, then I'm suggesting that we add a migration enabled boolean. One of the potential ways is that we have a migration enabled boolean and then migration methods, an optional field that takes into uh, that only gets implemented if migration. Yeah. yeah. Well I didn't succeed the uh, um convincing them to have that it's it's like this here i'm i'm showing you can i'm posting here the link it's in the discussions here but it was they didn't like it uh there was a, this a small discussion here about it but you can see here this is the the one with the enabled option yeah never mind it's like uh, so this is one this is one of the patterns and the other one i uh, you will see there is a um i said i said this is something very old what i linked the previous link to this one uh, on the chat that's why this is one of the pattern that i saw uh, someone even tried to reuse it again it's like uh, giving enums Instead of using enums, they use this this thing, which is like the options here are exclusive. Uh, are they are you cannot have two set, only one. And it's, and the way they set it, they, it's all of them have an empty struct. So the uh, it's like having each of them enable or disable. If you specify an empty uh, an empty struct like a close brace, uh, a braces, then it means it's enabled. If you don't specify it, it means it's disabled. And you don't, you you have only one option that you can have. Like you cannot have two here set. Like you cannot have bridge and masquerade set, for example. So yeah. this pattern was also used, that, and it was interesting that they tried to use it again uh, lately, and. And I learned what was the reason that they wanted to use it. So the reason was that it allows in the future to add parameter uh, sub parameters to this uh, to the options. So it's like it's like in the future, if you would like one of these to have a parameter, you could add it. That was the the reasoning behind it. Yeah, I I think. I have seen this pattern being used in, in Kubernetes APIs, like for status and things like that, where where they have they have a set of fields within the structs which are not uh, usable across different fields, right? So I have seen that pattern, but I have never seen an empty um, struct uh, being used like that. Um, one thing that I don't know whether it's a good thing or bad thing. But one thing to note here is this particular pattern specifically sidesteps the problems with enums. If you introduce a new uh, a new configuration option here, clients will not be broken due to that because likely the client also does not have that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but they, until they are upgraded. But they, they cannot, then the client cannot set something like a new one of them. So it's fine. They cannot set, the, for example, if it started with the first two and then the third one was added, he will not, uh, the client cannot add, cannot configure the third one. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The, until they upgrade, yeah. right? They can't configure until they upgrade. Yes. The problem, the, the thing is that this, this, uh, so th this one and the previous case, I, I find them very similar in the sense that the, the real problem is that you cannot different, differentiate between uh, something that you wanted to say that absence means default, VS upset means disabled. It's like you do not differentiate between the two and that's the problem. Like this mm -hmm. is the problem that I see. Um, yeah. This one is like uh, trying to to create. A, uh, I don't remember what what was the name in uh, in C, like to have uh, the same thing on the same. 
on the same like you can put multiple things under the same name under the same field something like that i forgot about it never mind it's uh th this pattern th these are the two patterns that i saw that uh, they are somehow coming back and i really had hard time to to explain why it is not good uh, yeah. at least i was not convincing so so i think my opinions are that this one is still little uh iffy at least my first thoughts are the pattern in this might have some some benefits we should think on it more the this one definitely i think i agree with you that that enabled and an optional field is a better way of expressing rather than implicitly um, having you know implicit assumptions being yeah but that's mm -hmm. like a yeah that's the problem here is that with feeling i cannot uh, convince so it's like uh, i try to make it uh, to give a good uh, convincing reasoning but it was not that uh, it didn't work so well so i think we need at least i feel like i need to read more and uh, see more ways where it, why it is better to do that that one against the other one but, uh, yeah. This is uh, again. This is another. Uh, I think it it comes back to all of these enums, not enums, uh, nil, not nil. Uh, how to tackle default stuff like that. It's like, it's 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 a big topic. Yeah. So I think the one idea that I'm having um, in my mind right now in order to solve this problem is, can we potentially start a running document and as we find these cases, we add it to that document. And, you know, periodically we can triage and discuss more. If, what that will help us allow is async um, discussion and digging around around the cases that might help and, and not help, right? And, and, and it, we will not lose this, this kind of patterns um, or discussions in, in meeting notes. Uh, I think it might be valuable to to start a document. So, what do you do? You have thoughts on that? Yeah, it's uh, fine. Uh, we could try. Yes, we could add it to a uh, to something that we need to answer it or or give opinions or talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Sounds, okay. Sounds good. I think um, after this call, I will take an action item to before before the next meeting. I'll take an action item to at least start a, a document and add three things in there one regarding the enum discussion and the other two regarding the, the two use cases you bring up and and we can um, discuss more um, async and brainstorming and things like that i i see um nashon has um, yes has actually, made... you i had this pro the same problem to add but so the what what solved it for me, Dachshund, was there is a on the top right you will see some uh, leave or I don't remember you need to do okay and then, then everything starts working. I don't know what why it. Yeah, happening. thank you. No so, idea what the... what's that hack. <laughs> it's not. I guess it's not a hack. It's just waiting for you to to press on it. So uh, uh, about the in, I'm think can you show it again? Um. Uh, uh yeah. you do you mean the enum design doc? No, no, the um the other the the other uh, example that uh, this is talked about. Oh, this one? Uh, no, the other one. <laughs> the, the the one with one. the empty st uh, stacks. Got it. Yeah. So uh, in other, if we want a uh, um configuration for each one of them, what we can do. I saw in other project that they have uh, like an interface uh, type within them and then uh, stuck for each one of them. And then you can ignore the one that is not the the other ones and only uh, use the, the one that is selected with the type. No, but this is, this is like... A... Ah, I understand what they yeah, did okay. here and it's ugly, I agree. <laughs> but... Uh... 
I think we can uh, we can have like uh, agreement uh, to solve it that everyone will have will be happy. Yes, so I think one me. one of the one of the maybe one of the inputs about uh, when discussing API in general and patterns is uh, is that if it's not in the docu the builder doc there we have builder we have this. Uh, uh, RP API architecture documents or archive of uh, books and so and so and so on. So if it doesn't exist, the part that does not exist in any one of them, then it is like a, a big, big uh, uh, question mark. Yeah, it's like maybe you are doing something really, really bad that uh, cannot cannot be even uh, easily auto-generated uh, things like that. And you, you need to rethink about it again. So be careful not to invent something new. And if you think it's really, really good, then it makes sense that they will also put it in those places, like uh, give it as an example or or uh, have it like, it, it's like, it's a big, big question mark if uh, if it's, a, it's good to use something like uh, something smart, <laughs> like a, in question mark, right? Uh, that's it. Yeah, I think that that's a good thought, but I I'm not sure how to communicate that. Right? Uh, no, it's. A, I think what you suggested is uh, is good. Like to we could put this into a document and at least try to give all the pros and cons there. And maybe after I'll finish reading three times that builder book again, is I will have more. Uh, more to say there. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. I think we have a few more minutes. Um, so if we don't have, okay, let me summarize what, what we discussed. I think we discussed the migration pattern here. pointer pattern and we need to okay <clears throat> yeah I'll take that action item to start the document immediately I, th I think this will be very valuable for um, from coming out of this, this call. Okay, I think next topic, um, is that you again, Eddie? Yeah, but I think Nakshon uh, touched it. Uh, he, he added that part and it's like the topic, uh, I wanted to raise it just because uh, Nakshon raised it uh, in, a, in another forum, so it's a good place to discuss it. If you will not finish today, then next time. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, let's, I think we can queue this up for next time. I think I saw one PR coming in uh, into our um, list. Uh, here, this one. Yeah, th this is mine. Okay, got it. Okay, um, do you want to Dig into it now or queue it up for next um, I, I tell I usually have conflict in the first half of the meet of this meeting, so I usually can't join. But um, if we have five minutes to describe, because it's actually very simple. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So uh, the idea is to not use the webhook for th things that the CRD can do for you. And I think for me, for, for the reason I wrote there. Um, so first of all, let the API server do its job and uh, do it for you. And uh, the transparency is very important for me, I think, because you can read the CRD and see the, um, the limitations. And also in this specific case that I, I touched, um, the implementation was only on the create webhook. And so if you created the wrong, uh, right uh, VM, you can still uh, update it to, to be wrong. 
because mm-hmm. uh, it's not part of the CRD. So when you enforce it in the CRD, you can you cannot uh, bypass it in in Apple. So I think I am, I mean, I don't want to stop the flow of thought, but but I have a few, few um, thoughts on this. Um, I, I think this is really good, right? I think it will help um, not only remove code burden from, from the web hooks, but also it will help performance. Um, we, can, we can imagine that as we remove code, the the latency of, of the web hooks will, will decrease. And so that's another um, point in addition to the code. Although one thing I would recommend to be careful of is if any of these validations are producing um, a user defined, well, web hook defined error message, then let's say you do you do a cube cutter create a BMI, right? And it has wrong, um, volume uh, definition um, array. And if it is producing uh, a specific error message which says volume not as expected, please correct this. In that case, will will you have feature parity when, when you move this into Cube API server? Um, yeah, but I guess, uh, I didn't check it, but I guess uh, the API server will provide a readable error for that. Correct. No, what I, what I was going was that the error message from, from our webhooks will be different from the API server provided. For um, sure. Error messages. And so w- where people can break there is, let's say you have created a client-side automation, right? That okay, if I get this error message while creating, do this, do this, do that. I think all of those client-side uh, automation will, will break in those cases. So my, my suggestion would be when you go ahead and, and you know remove this code, I think it will be worth it to enumerate the error messages we are breaking. That way we can make a decision whether it's okay to break them or Okay. Uh, so what, what do you want to to list it to well? uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? Um, you want to somehow collect the, the error messages that are actually dropped? You want to log it somewhere? Am I yeah, yeah. That? It could be either part of mailing list or or part of, of some some release load or something we, we ship out, right? That, hey, um, these are error messages you will not get anymore. Um, and, and, and that, that will be just a heads up for, for users who have any automations. Uh, okay. By the way, I'm not really sure if uh, the errors that are, we are getting, uh, from the web books or stuff like that, they are, we consider them APIs. It's like, I'm not really sure about that part. It's like, uh, it's a, uh, it's a gray area, I think. Yeah. I yeah, tend to say. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I tend to agree. I, I don't think that the specific text of, of the error messages is, is, should be part of the API. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's not an API, but I just, I to me, that's breaking clients, right? So let, let's think about kubectl, right? If if Kubernetes had had these kind of changes and they, they broke people, it they would really get screams from from users. Now our project is not as widely used as Kubernetes, so we'll probably not get that many screams. But I think it will be a good thing to um to know to strive for is, is to not break users. That that's where I'm coming from. But I do agree it's not part of the the API. But if we can facilitate the transition, then I think it should. That's my Okay, I'll add it to the release note in this uh, PR, if that enough. Yeah. Okay. I have to drop, I have another meeting. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Okay, so we'll continue. I will try to go over the what you open and uh, see you next week.
Yeah, you know? too. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye. Bye.